Keep your heads up and your arms covered, family. Here's the verse of the day. And it's Matthew 5.11. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. And just to make it clear, some of our brothers and sisters see the title of my videos and they automatically think that I'm setting dates. But I never set rapture dates. Jesus Christ said the signs of his coming would be in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And what I'm doing is pointing out those signs on the dates that they happen. I don't set rapture dates. I'm looking for our blessed hope and his appearance, but I'm not setting dates. And at the beginning of the last video, I went over Mark 13, 32. The truth, Jesus Christ. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. So if you're being persecuted for pointing out the signs or hoping that Jesus Christ comes every day, you're blessed. Jesus Christ knows our hearts. And he knows who's setting dates and he knows who's not. And he knows who's watching, and he knows who's not. And speaking of watching, here's what I'm seeing. And I'll show it to you. In the heavens, today is the first Passover, Nisan 14. And remember, the Hebrew calendar, the year, is shorter than the Gregorian year. And I haven't really went over this for a year and a lot in my life has been happening in the past year. But I'm going to try to make it really clear for you, family. The crucifixion took place on Passover, which is the first full moon of spring. On the first day of Nisan, two weeks before the Exodus, God showed Moses the crescent new moon, instructing him regarding the setting of the Jewish calendar and the mitzvah of sanctifying the new month. This month shall be for you the head of months, the first of the months of the year. Rosh Chodesh is the first day of the month in the Hebrew calendar and is marked by the appearance of the new moon. The full moon is always 15 days later on the 15th of the Hebrew month, often marking the start of the Jewish holidays. What does the Aries mean in Hebrew? In Hebrew astronomy, Aries was named Tale and symbolizes the Lamb of the world. And it's right here, titled Awakening from Above, the month of Nisan and Passover, and I highlighted it for you. The sign of Nisan is Tale. The Lamb, or Aries. And this should make it very clear after I go to Stellarium. Exodus chapter 12. This new moon is the beginning of new moons for you. It is the first new moon of the year for you. Nisan, the Lamb, or Aries. Now I'm going to do my best to put it all together and make it clear for you and show you why it matters and how obvious it is that the calendars are off. And remember, Jesus Christ did not say that the signs of his coming would be on the calendars or on the holidays or feast dates. He said that the signs of his coming would be in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. So that's why I'm watching the sun, moon, and stars. And when you go to time and date, you could see on the left column, those are the new moons. And I highlighted March's new moon. It was March 21st. And now I'll take you to Stellarium on March 21st, the new moon. And as you can see, Aries, and remember, Aries means Nisan, the Lamb. But the moon is nowhere near Aries, the new moon, on March 21st. It's actually way over here on what they call Cetus, right above the tail of what they call Cetus. And now I'll take you back to time and date and show you that the following new moon, the last new moon that was just confirmed, was on April 19th. 
And as you can see, the sun and the moon are both leaving what they call Pisces going into and right under Aries. And the sun and the moon together is called a governing sign. And it was. It was the hybrid eclipse. And as you go through the hours to the 20th, you could see that the moon goes right underneath Aries. Nissan. The Lamb, marking Nissan, the month. We just watched it happen, family, on April 19th and 20th. It's right there, marking the month Nissan. Nissan won. And when you go 14 days ahead, marking Nissan 14, Passover, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. It's right there. Today. And tomorrow is the blood moon eclipse, which I showed you in the last video. When you go through the hours, you could see it actually, the moon goes dark right there. You can see it shade dark. That's the eclipse going into what they call the scale. They call Libra. And even though they're celebrating the second Passover today and recognizing it today on the calendars in the heavens, it's really Passover. And a lot of watchmen, including myself, for the last few years have been seeing that the calendar is a month off. And here's why it's so gigantinormous, family. Over three years ago, I put out this video, Three Blood Moons on Purim, three years in a row, in 2024, 2025, and 2026. And the video just happened to be 8 minutes and 11 seconds long. Then over two months ago, I went back over it. Rapture, anytime now, before the Three Blood Moons on Purim. And the reason why that's so gigantinormous is next year, there's three blood moons in a row, 2024, 2025, 2026. And they'll be celebrating Purim. But it will really be Passover on all three of those blood moons. It has to be marking the tribulation. Ooh, I'm being filled with the Holy Spirit. All glory to you, Father, in your name, Jesus Christ. Let's go. And you already know, Jesus Christ is at the door and the rapture is imminent. So I'll take you back to time and date. And the third column over is the full moons and the time that they are at. And on the West Coast, tomorrow, the full moon is at 1034 a.m. And one of the reasons, the biggest reason why the full moons are so important is because in Acts chapter 2, the word says that we will be having visions and dreams. And the word is talking about Jesus Christ coming. These are prophetic visions and dreams. And the most popular one that more people have had than any other dream is two moons, two full moons. And I've seen it in the comments so many times. And I've heard so many brothers and sisters talk about it. That when they dream about the rapture, it's a full moon. And I just got hit with the Holy Spirit again, all glory to you, Father. So it only makes sense that the rapture will happen on a full moon. And if you've noticed, for years now, since the Tetrad, we've all been seeing that all of these full moons are landing on holidays. Mostly Jewish holidays, like Passover. And that can only be God's odds. It's not a coincidence. They're for appointed times. It's written, Genesis 1.14, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and years. Then he said, Luke 21, 25, And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations. Wow, like right now, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring? And real quick, tomorrow's full moon will be at 1734 universally. 
And when you go to Bible Strong's Concordance for 1734 in Greek, the definition is 11th. And when you scroll down, there's only three occurrences about the 11th hour that were hired about the 11th hour. And Jesus Christ said that they were paid the same. And when you get to the last occurrence, it's Revelation 21, 20, the 11th foundation of the walls of heaven. And when you go to Strong's Hebrew for 1734, the time of the full moon universally, UTC time, the definition is his beloved. And the moon is right there next to Spica right now. And remember, the full moon is tomorrow. Right when the partial blood moon eclipse happens, where you can see the moon being shaded right there as it's going into what they call Libra, the judgment scale. And all glory to our Father in the name above every name, Jesus Christ. I'm still tracking the asteroid Esther for you, family. And it's right there today. And remember, the Jewish people's Passover is a week long. So you would go seven days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. As you can see, Esther is lined up with the eye of the bull on the 11th, which is the connection with the time of the full moon, 1734, universal time. In Bible Strong's, I just showed you, it means 11th. It's a bullseye connection. And on May 14th, exactly 75 years on the Gregorian calendar, 75 years, Israel's birthday. The asteroids, named after Queen Esther and Queen Cleopatra, are on both sides of the bull's eye. While we're waiting for the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Hamashiach, and there's a lot more going on this month. And if we're still here, God willing, I'll go over it. If not, I'll see you in the clouds. I love you, family.